Welcome to this presentation on how to implant a Versailles VBS system from Boston Scientific. Considering the nature of this lecture, I would like to point out that I am consultant for, among other companies, Boston Scientific. But the opinions expressed here are my own and completely independent from Boston Scientific. If you are not experienced in DBS implantation, please consult instead the full-length lecture. This is the short version for experienced users. Most DBS surgeons are well acquainted with the products of Medtronic, and the easiest way of describing the implantation procedure of Boston Scientific is by simply mentioning what is different from implanting the products from Medtronic. The first thing is that the holding tool for the electrode holder the short tech is larger, so the minimal length of the cranial incision is about 5 mm longer. The anchoring device for the electrode, the short tech, is similar to the stim lock from Medtronic and is mounted in the same way. The base is placed in the burr hole using the holding tool and attached with two screws as seen here. The holding tool is then removed when the screws are in place. If you want, you can now insert the clip into the ring to make sure that it fit and can be locked. When stim lock from Medtronic is unstable, or when there is a poor fit of the clip in the ring. This is most often because the burr hole is too narrow. If you enlarge the burr hole, then you have solved the problem. This is a problem that I never encountered with SureTech, because the diameter of the part which is inserted into the burr hole is smaller as seen here, and this is even more true uh, regarding the area where sure tech might interfere with the bone edge. The electrodes are similar. The major difference is of course the directional contacts and the directional marker on the Boston electrode. Further, the Boston electrode does not have a plastic tip. The deepest contact is the tip. Also, in contrast to Medtronic, the inner stylet is not locked to the electrode. For that reason, it is important to make sure that the inner stylet is well inserted. When preparing the electrode, the stop screw should face upwards in the same direction as the directional marker. The only difference when implanting the Boston electrode is that it is probably best to keep the directional marker in the intended position during the insertion in order to avoid torque. When the electrode is in place, I seal the durotomy with tissue glue. Place the clip in the ring and lock the electrode in the manner seen here. We then remove the electrode stop and then the inner stylet from the DBS electrode. Place the cap in the base and gently press the electrode into an electrode groove perpendicular to the opening in the clip. Press the cap so that it lock into the ring. 
make sure that the electrode is in the groove before locking the cap. Otherwise, there is a risk of crushing the electrode. For added security, it is possible to use several grooves to make a loop as seen here. When the electrode is in place, <clears throat> we will verify the location of the electrode using an O-arm and we can look at the direction of the directional contacts by visualizing the directional marker on the electrode. Some torque might have occurred during the implantation of the electrode and it has been demonstrated that a significant change can occur early after the implantation. To be honest, I will do my best to introduce the electrode in the correct position, but I will not correct the rotation of the electrode. In the end, I think that this is probably of limited clinical importance and we are relying mostly on the stimulation response seen later during the monopolar review. A not very important but perhaps interesting observation is that with the new directional leads we quite often see a small edema where the electrode enters the cortex. However, when we compare this with some patients implanted with Medtronic, it seems as if the reason why we seldom saw this edema with Medtronic is simply that the artifact from the electrode is larger with Medtronic, hiding a possible edema. Regarding the IPG pocket on the chest, you can estimate the size of the incision and pocket by using the template. It is then time for the tunnelation. With Medtronic, the carrier at the end of the tunnelator is straight and completely inflexible. A straight end increases the risk for snapping back of the tunneling tool when retracted, with possible injury to the external jugular vein. The tunneling tool from Boston Scientific can be bent almost down to the tip, but the tip is unfortunately very sharp and I prefer to use a similar model that is less sharp. With a tunnelation tool that can be shaped as desired, it is easy to perform the tunnelation without removing the stereotactic frame, as seen here, which save a lot of time. A plastic tube is placed over the tunnelation tool before tunnelation and then left in place when the tunnelation tool is retracted. The tunnelation between the cranial incision and the incision behind the ear can be made with a tunnelation tool, but often it is faster to just pull up the plastic tube using a large clamp. The Boston extension cable is very thin and is tunnelated from the cranial incision to the IPG incision, which is the opposite to the tunnelation of uh, the Medtronic extension cable. The extension cable are threaded through the plastic tubes from the cranial incision to the incision behind the ear, and the plastic tube is removed. This is then repeated from the incision behind the ear down to the chest pocket. We had some problems with bowstringing from straining cables with the old extensions from Metronic. This problem was much reduced with the flexible extensions from Metronic. Even though the extensions from Boston are not flexible, we have not encountered any problems with bowstringing. I believe that this might have to do not only with the flexibility of the extensions, but also with the diameter, since the phenomenon of bowstringing is not caused only by a tight extension cable. Often it is caused by a fibrous sheet around the extension cable, which is anchored to the clavicle and to the skull. Here we see one such case with bowstringing even six months after removal of the extension cable. And here we see a fibrous sheet around the extension cable that was attached to the clavicle. Perhaps the minor diameter of the Boston extension 
make the formation of a large fibrous sheet less likely. When connecting the electrode and the extension cable, with Medtronic you tighten four screws, you pass the connector boot over the connector and you secure the connector boot with two sutures. The connector from Boston has no boot or sutures and you need only to tighten one screw. After you have connected all the implants, make sure that the impedance is OK. If not, correct the location of the electrode within the connector and or the extension cable within the IPG in order to solve the problem. Note that the IPG from Boston Scientific need to be in direct contact with the body when testing the impedance. The testing itself is however done on distance, so the patient remote control does not need to be sterile. And with that, we end this short presentation. Thank you for your attention.